right. Well, hello everyone. My name is Katie Bradford Osborne. I am the founder and curator of Roaring Artists Gallery. We are a fully virtual art gallery and platform for the voices of women identifying artists. And I am so excited today. We're here for an artist talk with Lauren Scott Corwin for her You Are Here show. I'm going to read a quick bio for you, Lauren. I'm going to, and then your artist statement, and then I'm going to hand it over to you. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say. All right. Lauren Scott Corwin is a mixed media artist living in Western Massachusetts. Lauren uses her print, uses printmaking techniques, spray paint, and even quilting along with traditional mediums such as oil paint on canvas to create her colorful narratives with geometric shapes that focus on relationships. Lauren graduated with a BFA in painting from Maryland Institute College of Art in 2006 and with her MFA in painting from University of Delaware in 2008. These days, Lauren is a mother to a wonderful four-year-old, wife to her high school sweetheart, and a high school teacher at an independent boarding school where she takes pride in her work with young people, particularly those seeking guidance for art school. And then the artist statement for this show, I know we'll hear a lot more of this in depth, so I'll give it a quick read. One day in June 2020, as I drove up the driveway to our home in Vermont with my husband and four-year-old son, we noticed something that seemed different. Mom, why is the porch all wet? My son asked. We rushed inside to be greeted by a forest of mold encapsulating the house as my husband's feet squished through the solid foot of murky water. That summer began a discovery that put into question what the very notion of home meant. During the pandemic, the whole concept of home had caved in on itself within a few short weeks, as I imagine was the case with many Americans, and my domestic spaces were now reimagined to facilitate every possible reality. While our house may be just a structure, what was behind our innate sense of belonging to the environment we fostered there? I found myself mourning the chaotic hum of daily life, along with the physical ephemera of held, that held those memories. My work in You Are Here tries to grapple with the idea of physical meaning belonging to a space. The approach for each of my paintings demands a new set of materials or approaches. Some elements of my work are from upcycled materials found among my environment, donated clothes, own linens, curtains, textiles discarded in the trash, which carry the history of a fixed illusionistic image of a space. The materiality of the work can recall the history and can enact metaphors about time, movement, growth, and experience. In addition, without a physical space in 2020, I was left to process what my role was as a mother, partner, pattern enthusiast, painter, and vessel of my only surviving memories. I've considered the notion that the symbiosis of both grief and repetition in handiwork are achieving a paradoxical effect in a hopeful funerary custom. I think a lot about the weight of the materials, the lightness of the paint, the spray paint, the weave of the textiles, the proof of the hand, and, show their his and how their history permeates a deeper understanding of what we consider valuable. All right, I think that is one of the most beautiful artist statements as it tells the story. So I'm really excited to hear more about um, a lot of parts of that. So I'm gonna hand it over to you and right. we're excited to hear from you. Great, thank you so much, Katie. All right, so let me get my set up going. Um, <clears throat> basically, I just wanna share my screen. Okay. Awesome. Okay, hopefully you all can see this. Um, all right, so for all of you out there, welcome. Um, thank you so much, Katie, for introducing me and that was really, that was awesome. Um, so I wanted to start uh, off just sort of introducing myself a little bit. I know that we just had a little bit of an, you know, an introduction, but um, for, for anyone that doesn't know me or anything about me, my name is Lauren. Scott Corwin. I always tell my students, just call me Lauren. Um, but you can, you know, see that I um, I do have a lot going on with my mixed media artist background. Um, in probably when I graduated grad school, you know, 12 years ago now, or 13 years ago, um, I actually did both quilting and painting. And so my initial response to pretty much anything in the last decade of my life has sort of been trying to figure out kind of like the conversation between the two. Um, I would say that my love for textiles has always been there and my love for painting has always been there. And this is actually a really fun show because I was able to sort of see them kind of work in tandem together. So um, yeah, so let's just get started. Um, 
Okay, so really quick, just to start us off, I, I thought I would just throw a picture of, of my studio in there as it stands. Um, this is actually, I would say, probably a cleaner version of it if I had to be completely upfront about what you're looking at. Um, but you can see that I have kind of different stations for things. So I have my little design wall over on the left, my paintings on the right, everything is kind of like a work in progress and it sort of lives its life in the background um, until it's on my easel. And um, yeah, so it's it's definitely looked a little different throughout the years, but like this is one of the ones that I really love is like the, the colors that I'm working with. Um, typically my quilts always wind up in my paintings and vice versa. So they're always in dialogue. And I think that one of the biggest question marks that I always have is sort of like, what sort of dialogue are they having? Are they are they kind of helping each other out? Are they are they sort of in their own little like staying in their own lane? Um, and I don't know if I had necessarily have an answer for that. Um, I did want to sort of say something just about how I I do kind of approach some art, and I'll switch the slide for this as we look at this one. Um, so I would say like when you start an artist talk, most artists do uh, kind of come up with an idea and they think about like how, how they can execute that idea through some of the mediums that they're working with. And I think for me, particularly as I was putting the show together, one of the things that I was starting to think about was like, that was sort of less and less how I worked. And so my artist Damon Dutt did have like a, a sort of catalyst for how I did start to think about like memory and home. But um, for me, as I started every painting, and this is the one that actually kind of started this whole thing. This one is called You Are Here. This one is actually the self-titled piece. Um, I really did want to just freely explore um, <clears throat> my history of home and, and sort of what it meant like for me. Um, and I just sort of wanted to leave it there just for the viewers to sort of take what they could out of it. So for me, like that's a very formal way of approaching it. Like I really just love color, I love shape and um, <clears throat> and like letting people look inside it and sort of find different parts is, is sort of the joy that I get, um, you know, within all the stuff that I end up doing. So for me, I'm definitely like a formal painter. I think that kind of goes hand in hand with just as I quilt, you know, with, with fabric, you, you can't really pre-mix colors. Um, and so you're starting to work with shapes primarily. And I think as I started to really get involved with painting more and more, especially with this last show, um, that was sort of an approach that I started to find myself more and more like really diving into. So this is another one. And I would actually say this one does not um, exist in this form anymore, but I really enjoy that this had like so much, uh, I guess, in terms of shape and, and space sort of opened up a nice little realm of what I was trying to get at. And so, you know, thinking about like interrupted realism is sort of one of the ways that I would describe some of the work that I would do, like where you could sort of make sensitive parts of it, but not necessarily understand what all of it's doing. Um, and, you know, this kind of plays a part in, in how you sort of fabricate memory, you know, knowing that you had a memory or, or knowing how you felt in a memory, but you don't quite understand or maybe don't recollect all of the details of that. Um, maybe a year is missing or a sense of place is missing, but you, always remember certain parts, you know, for me, it's always like the smell of whatever my grandmother was cooking or something like that, or like the lawn chairs and how they were formed in the back. Um, or just like the decade of the nineties and how that had a color palette, you know, that kind of thing is, is something that will always kind of stick with me and how the, the work is built. So to sort of go in a little bit, this is just a quick, you know, <laughs> backdrop of some of the things that, that really did find their way in the work I was building for the show was going in and finding like your house just got totally flooded. And um, and for some of you that might know my background, I do actually live um, in a boarding school campus. So we, my husband and I actually do have a house that we don't live in all day, every day. And all of our stuff is in this other structure in Vermont. And, uh, and so when we, you know, went home on a break this is when we found it so it was it was like months in the making um which is why there was so much damage and it was it was pretty troubling um you know these are all the ceiling tiles that kind of fell in and the water had receded at that point but it was still gross like I mean there is so so many things that we just had to sort of make um 
decisions about big adult decisions that I was not ready to make. You know, when you first walk into something and you start to see like all of your yearbooks are just like waterlogged and you're like, well, there you go. <laughs> you know, like, and, and starting to own the fact that all those memories were not physical anymore. That's where, that's where I was sort of going out with my, on my own, like living vessel of my memories and, um, and sort of owning that. And this is like my last one here. This is all of our floorboards. I've never seen anything quite like it. Um, I just thought this was such an interesting way that water can, I don't know, damage something. Um, and also just, you know, our rugs and just, it just was a very big feat of emotional and manual labor to like get this house kind of back to what it needed to be um, for us to start to rebuild. And it, it was during the pandemic. So there was, uh, there was so many hurdles that I felt like me, like taking my artist hat off and sort of adopting the mom hat and like, you know, the adult hat, which I have always sort of tried to not become as a kid. Um, it was, it was a definitely like an emotional year for us. Um, but I, I really loved that, you know, we were able to sort of make sense out of it um, as a team. My husband and I, I always find is just, he's just one of my favorite people. So we ended up just getting through it. You know, we, my studio also getting shut down by COVID, which actually had nothing to do with the, with the actual flood, but, you know, moving all the stuff from my studio, just so I can have a temporary workspace. Uh, it just all happened in the same week type of deal. So yeah, I was, a, I was in a different mental space for sure um, for pretty much the whole summer <laughs> of 2020. But this was just me camping out on the ground. You can see I had my little like Amazon box holding up my palette. I mean, this it doesn't get any more primitive than that. Um, and then this is my husband's like, this is office essentially that I just moved in and like put all my stuff on his stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> a lot of trust there, you know. Oof. <clears throat> um, that piece actually, if you remember just in the last slide was, was what this was becoming. Um, this was kind of like the earlier stage of it, but I ended up finishing it this, that year. Um, this was a, a really interesting piece. And I think one of the first ones where I actually was able to sort of harness like a good sense of like, like shape meets form meets like value. And I, I really, um, I, I actually, I just, think this is one of my biggest triumphs for that reason because you know when you start to organize something especially based on so loosely on a, an idea to sort of get it to a, a place where you're starting to see your vision like really happening I think is is pretty exciting um for me <laughs> and I realize that as a quilter sometimes this doesn't always help but like you, there's a lot of improv and so you know when you start to like adopt colors and this is exactly probably why at the crux of my whole <laughs> artist palette is just so colorful is because I love colors and I can't deny any of them. So I'd say this is my very favorite uh, limited palette painting that I've done to date in that it just holds um, kind of a nice little section of that like want for me as an artist, but also um, is familiar enough, I think that other people can relate to it. So I did want to talk a little bit about my my quilt paintings, which do have a presence in the in the show. Um, this is actually the how they all start. <clears throat> so part of the part of the fun of you know kind of going into the space where you get to like sift through all your belongings is that some of the stuff that you find do survive. And for me, I had a, a handful of postcards and you know photos and all sorts of different. Um, components there's like atlas um all and the biggest thing is really just all my old paintings I get I decided to cut up into different shapes and then just rebuild them on little canvases and so this is just a handful of what you know you can sort of expect with some this is like my iteration my first iteration um where they just basically lived in different ways and I put them up into kind of a new space and then what I ended up doing which is very hard to see in this photo, but I would dip them into high gloss resin and probably like two or three dips. It, it ends up being like a very thick, flat shining um, kind of top, which I, I really love um, just in terms of how it kind of like holds all of these this information in and also just talks about just um, preservation, I think in a way uh, 
you know, it keeps, keeps everything out of the elements, you know, which is what, what exactly they've all survived in. So this is an example of one of the paintings that I did. And then this one actually didn't make it into my Vermont house, but um, I made a call somewhere in the, in, in the history of it that it needed to get cut up. So that painting really didn't live a long life, but it, you know, I have examples like that where they get dipped in the resin and, and start to see a new form. And this is just some of the new ones that I, I got to work on with some, I just took a, a couple books, get to cut out some birds, you know, include them in, change a little bit of the subject matter and kind of see how they all work together. This was a drawing that I actually had done on newsprint that was, um, I didn't realize how cool the resin would look on it, but one of the things that I, I really enjoyed about this was like, so this was just like a gesture drawing that I had done years ago. And it was just in like a, a palette or like one of those, like, yeah, I don't know, portfolios, like little cardboard portfolios that was kind of in my basement. and. One of the very cool things about it was when it hit resin, it actually turned completely transparent. So I, I kind of like that there is this history behind it and you can see kind of the underside of it, but it still has a nice presence to it. So I, yeah, I don't know. I'm still learning about materials. It's it's not something I'm very fluent in. I know for me, resin is, is sort of a new-ish thing, but for me, I, I really love like seeing the tactility of all the all the pieces coming together. I mean, canvas has its own properties and so, and clearly newsprint does. So it's very fun. Yeah, and this is some of my new ones uh, that are in the show now, just like library cards and postcards and all little gems. You know, you could tell I'm a mom to a, a little kid. I have all these stickers. Um, and then this was a, a quilt. I had, this is probably one of my earlier quilts, but, um, just sort of basing it off the idea of quilt paintings, like where you take like a big section of something, cut it up. Um, and this was also redone just using triangles and, and everything kind of in the same general shape as the one before. Um, this is the only quilt so far. And I know that, you know, my artist mother group and I chatted in this fall about breaking out of the rectangle. And that's always something I've wanted to do more and more, but I think this is the first time that it's felt like kind of a goal and it really kind of worked together and I actually really think this this one is is just a fun piece for sure um just to have in my kind of like collection just to sort of push the boundaries of what shape looks like um as a boundary for sure so to get back into the paintings we will get back to quotes too but the paintings also just I think are a direct reflection you know for me I, I really always um like taking a form and using the idea of it. Um, so like for this, it would be like, I really love the, the idea of the landscape, you know, the idea of like, it looks sort of like a quilt. It can be kind of playing around with your idea of elevation um, and also just like a neighborhood kind of sitting on top of it, but it also is part of this person's shirt. And I just like the person like kind of having no sense of <laughs> like, there's no mood. They're, they're just, absolutely ambivalent about what's happening and um just sort of playing around with the the notion of just um you know you're like tweaking what people already see so you have this sort of neighborhood and these are all houses that were based off the neighborhood that I grew up in um so these are actually real homes that I know pretty well um and, and sort of letting the viewer see something that they've never encountered before has always been kind of a really big play for me um, my husband and I, well, my husband is always like, who's not an artist, by the way, this, this painting has been up in our house here and there for a number of years. And his, one of his first takes was like, you know, one, one random night, he'd be like, oh, do you see that there's an American flag behind her? And it just like always struck me as something I never thought about as an artist. And now, now it's like, I can't unsee it. Um, and so it's very fascinating to see what other people kind of get from the, some of the shapes that kind of are built in the behind scenes. So my next few paintings, and I don't, I don't need to take a ton of time on these because um, I think they, they kind of do a lot of their own talking, but 
I think that as we started to kind of play around with the idea of the pandemic and using the idea of home, um, for me, having such a young child, there were there was like a long period of time where he was homebound with us. Um, the school closed. Our school was sort of, I would say, generally closed. Um, we did have some virtual stuff because I am, an, um, I should say, I am a high school art teacher. And um, one of the things that I started bringing in my painting were door frames. And I, I really love the idea of having it be kind of like this very mysterious space where somebody's going to exist, you know, thinking about how you can sort of have all this fun kind of extruding from the frame, but at the same time, there's so much chaos, you know, like there were definitely days where as a parent during the pandemic, um, it, this sort of looked like my life, <laughs> this painting sort of encapsulated how I felt like, uh, you know, crafts forever. And I had this, like, you know, I was working on my own things. And I, I had this, I remember this project that I had with this red and white quilt that was always on the ground and it became kind of the rug. And, you know, that's the sort of thing that I, I think I was really trying to like build upon um, with some of the work in, in this time period. So I did have a number of these where there were door frames, um, just like the idea of, of sort of walking through the next space and wasn't sure what that would have looked like for us, you know, when you're dead inside um, like the pandemic and you don't really know quite like what's next, if there's going to be something that you're going to have to face. Um, but just sort of thinking in the, in the realm of like all the stuff that I know, I'm going to just sort of let just explode through the door. And, and this would just, this is just sort of how I responded to that time. So this is just a, <clears throat> this is just a close up. My, my house plants did get to be my models for some of this. You could tell. <laughs> Um, this is another one. I call this Ryan Road. And Ryan Road was a, a road that my grandmother um, had a house on. And so for me, and she, I should also mention, she was down the street from my family. So I would always walk there and it was just, you know, two blocks away. Um, but for me, like just having this sort of like pattern, sense of pattern with, you know, like her fence and, and all these things that sort of came together um, for me, it was just a really big point of nostalgia. Uh, this painting is is one of the first times I've really ever explored these color relationships. I wanted to kind of play around with complementary colors and kind of play around with the vibrancy of that. My Monstera plant got front row seat at being my model. Um, it was really, I mean, to a point, like I think every painter can sort of admit that play is a big part of it. And you want to make sure that you're sort of enjoying your time in the studio, but also discovering new parts of it, whether it's through media or concept. Um, and so for me, like having this piece was just such a point of joy for me. Um, and I just think that as a color palette, I don't know, it's something that, I, that greets me with so, so much warmth every day. I just get, I still enjoy kind of how it all plays together. So this piece, <clears throat> this piece is by far my biggest piece. This one's four feet by six feet. Um, and it's called Demeter. Demeter is an interesting one because I would say as a Latin kid, uh, the kid who learned all about the mythology in school, um, I always felt like Demeter was my, my person of choice in the mytho mythological world. Um, and as a parent who kind of understands now, like that everything kind of comes in seasons, um, this was just a really big painting to sort of undergo thinking about kind of like this the circular effect of just you know life and death and um kind of just like all the different components that sort of make up what we know is real life you know um this was like so much to unpack with this painting I almost don't even know how to start um but I will say that if y'all have any questions about any of the stuff I am an open book um you can definitely look at it and see kind of how it's going but Color plays a big role for me, along with just the idea of layering. Um, layering has always been a big part. And I think just in life, it, it's really hard to sort of divorce those two things. So this is just a close up of that. I did have some quilts and, and this quilt um, is 
a scrap quilt. And I think this one and the next one kind of do, do some of the work in terms of explaining it, but these are all different um, textiles that were like somewhere in my house when it was flooded and I got to like dry clean them. <laughs> in this case, I had to dry clean a few of them, but they were all upcycled. Um, you know, parts of it I had to cut or get rid of, or, you know, they were curtains. And um, I, I ended up making a, a handful of quilts just based on some of the stuff that kind of survived the flood. And so this one was one of the, one of the pieces too. And this was actually when I was still building it. So it's just the quilt top, but the begin the, um, what I ended up doing with this piece was all of the stuff was different colors. These were, you know, textiles with pinks and reds and greens and blues and yellows. And I ended up just dipping it into this big vat of indigo dye with the exception of the red part and just kind of letting the indigo kind of do the thing. And that was one of the really fun parts of, of just the summer was just sort of experimenting with color and seeing what layers can do. Cause I knew indigo was a natural dye but I wasn't sure how much it would overcome some of the colors that I was working on. And I don't know if you can see my cursor, but this is just um, like an orphan quilt block that I got from, you know, like an older aunt. And same with this one. This was like all different parts of just like a project that never really came into fruition. So I was kind of using all these different like ingredients and seeing kind of how they can mix together. Um, and then this is the final piece where I got to <clears throat> got to hand quilt it as well. So this one actually I uh, has seen a few different formations, but um, this is this is it for it. This is my diptych called Lemoyne one and two, and and these two are are kind of a these kind of are, are little projects that I was working on um, when I was trying to document kind of what would look like if I was to have a quilt pattern as a rug, almost like what I literally did during the pandemic <laughs> with this project that never actually left my floor. But I ended up taking into the Lemoyne star, which is one of the first patterns that I was actually taught when I started to do the quilting thing. And, you know, I, I would say, generally speaking, I don't, I would sort of categorize myself now as more of an improv quilter. I don't really stick to any patterns. Um, but there is something like pretty foundational about the history of quilting and textile work um, just in the, yeah, just the, the history that my family particularly had with it. Um, I have a lot of women in my family who are very good at sewing. You know, they make either quilts. My mom is, is really more, um, you know, she does more like outfits, I would say. But, you know, I think that there is so much to be said about all the handiwork that's sort of built in and then kind of interweaving these patterns within like the actual space that they are trying to occupy. Um, I know it was a compositional endeavor for me, but also just trying to see how these these forms can sort of work together to sort of create like something that you can believe in. And so this one is, is um, made with spray paint and oil paint. Um, and all of these, I know that's, it's not always easy to photograph, but this is all like safety orange. It's like so bright when you see it in real life. Um, so I, I get, I, I kind of enjoy that there's this sort of playfulness with color and it almost like forces you to look at it. So I will say that this is my group that I decided to be the first pe person to like unveil this, um, this next like series in, um, Three of these are in the show right now, but this actually is a six part series where this is actually a big panorama of my house. And so you can see that it starts on the left, works its way to the right, and it starts from morning until dusk. Um, there are components in both just using time, but also using shape and color will always play a role in it. And I wanted to sort of dive into like, what could be the colors of certain parts of the day, you know, like the afternoon sun, or maybe like that really warm light you have in the corner, but it's not super bright outside. So it's sort of taking over the, the mood. Um, and I really just wanted to play around with shape and, um, and see kind of where I could go with it. So some of these are still getting worked on. Uh, the ones in the show are done. And I invite you all, if you're interested to see these in a little bit more, um, intimately to go visit that for sure. 
Um, these are my last two of, you know, of that series. And I think as I was starting to stay, say in the beginning was like, how do I, <clears throat> these paintings, I think for me really do a beautiful job of synthesizing my quilts. And I'll show you an example of that. So I have these, <clears throat> I have these uh, quilts that are all based on these like patterns. They're all painted on too. So there's some screen print, there's some spray paint, there's some paint. <laughs> there's a lot of applique. I mean, there's all, it's all there. It's, these paintings are, I don't even know if I would call them quilts at this point. They're probably just, you know, mixed media. But I, I actually really loved that I wanted to try something totally different. And also at the same time, try it in a way that I already knew. And so, you know, when I put them together, this is essentially, the relationship that they get. And I, I love that this, the paintings and the quilts kind of can hold their own in, in that dynamic. Um, so for me, this is, this is the beginning of a conversation that I'm, I'm excited to keep having throughout the year. I'm excited to also show this probably for the first time ever in the show. Um, so that's, I feel like this is just a big turning point in terms of how I can sort of build this. So, um, that's really it. And, and I want to thank everybody for attending. If you want to find me on Instagram, if you haven't already, um, this is where you can. And uh, my website is just my name. Um, and I have all the, all the stuff that I just talked about and more up there. So if you want to take a look at any of the stuff that I'm working on in progress and so forth, um, I invite you to. So thank you. Thank you so much, Lauren. Does anybody have any questions before I launch into the ones that I have? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> well, I am obviously a huge fan of your work. I don't think that I mentioned before, Lauren is actually one of our represented artists. So clearly I am a big fan of Lauren's work. <laughs> but I was so excited for this show, um, before I even knew that there was really a story behind it, I feel like it is so wonderful to see how artists tend to, especially women artists, because we feel things and we have to handle things in a different way, especially being caregivers and being spouses and things like that. I feel like we have to handle things in a different way. And it, it definitely invites itself into our art. Mm -hmm. And what is going on around us definitely is a part of our art. And it is so, what word do I want to use here? I'll go with beautiful. It's really beautiful the way that you took that experience and you put it into your art and the layers that it is. I think clearly it was a very layered experience. <laughs> so that oh my that. gosh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I would say a lot of people probably felt like that too. There's yeah. A lot a lot of different things happening all at once. I feel like for a shared experience that the pandemic really was across the world, we've all had such different experiences with it. And I think a lot of people can certainly relate to you sharing your experience, even though ours was probably a little different. Maybe we had, we had to handle things in a different way. We had different issues, but um, it's just, Thank you for putting it out there is mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say. I think it's really wonderful that you have and that you're sharing that with the world in the way that you are. Oh, thanks so much, Katie. That's so sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, okay. One of the things I love about your artwork is I love collage. I absolutely love collage. Your work has that same sort of feeling to me. And part mm -hmm. of the reason why I like collage so much is because of that layered aspect. I mean, I just did an entire show based on layers, essentially. <laughs> I obviously love layers, <laughs> but yours has that kind of that same sort of feel it, but it's, it's all painted. How do you decide to keep going or to stop? Oh gosh, this is a, a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> I would say uh, that's, and I don't even know if I have a good answer for this. I, I would say it doesn't always it, so I would say, yeah, there are days where I, I think I might be done and then I'm completely 
you know, I revisit it a week later, maybe even a year later, and I realize that there's something that isn't quite gelling anymore. Um, so I definitely have moments where paintings get reworked over the course of a long time. I think that's one of my biggest, I would say like habits is, is just reworking something to the point where either it's just, it's gone forever <laughs> and it can't come back. <laughs> and then you're emailing your gallerist. I need you to pull that one down because it doesn't yeah. exist anymore. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Katie is used to things getting emailed like that. Which is like, yes. But I have to say, like, it, it's never upset me for sure. It's the <laughs> coolest, <laughs> it's the coolest thing to me about your practice in some ways. It is so brave to take these pieces that you have and cut them up or the way that you do with your quilt paintings. I personally own two quilt paintings mm -hmm. from a previous show that Lauren did. So I can tell you clearly, I love these pieces and part of the reason is there's just so much in there there's everything that you have brought to it from years and years and then there's everything that the viewer brings to it as well in a lot of ways and I think that's something that's really really special about those quilt paintings in particular so yeah. anybody who is watching this if you have not seen Lauren's quilt paintings go look at every one of them they are all there's something special to find in all of them and I think it is just a um really special experience that you let us have <laughs> with that oh, particular that's so sweet thank you yeah I I like the quilt paintings too just because they are different in terms of how you can like digest the sort of media like I mean they're so small that they're like this intimate little gift um even as like I started to cut up some of my like library cards or something I just I had stickers I found this like pile of post-its that kind of survived you know I'm just like putting it all in there and letting it kind of do the things <laughs> like I kind of give that these little little pieces of paper so much responsibility to kind of work together but I like that they're so much smaller than everything else just because you do have that moment to have like a handheld time <laughs> like that's just frozen in resin and you're just mm -hmm. like this is intimate this is gift literally. I really really like that description oh, that's really cute I think um, cute's not the word I'm looking for there. <laughs> cute's cool. It's, a, it's a, almost a sweet way. There we go. That's what I'm trying to say of saying that I really like that a lot. Mm. Speaking of that, so there are some things that show up a lot in your pieces. Um, two things in particular, birds. Birds show up a lot. Yep. Um, is it lemon trees? The um, yellow, it's lemons, right? Yeah, lemons, yep. Mm -hmm. So um, what do those yeah. mean? So, okay. Well, the birds are all different. So that's that was sort of my first thing. That was one of my very first things in grad school was thinking about birds and how we as people always have kind of identified birds, not necessarily of anything other than just we like assign birds different states, you know, like, so every state's got their their state bird. And I always thought this was kind of fun how people just categorize birds. And I've always been a big bird nerd. I, I always have like the most varsity level decked out like bird feeding situation in my backyard <laughs> to the point where I think I scared our neighbors. Um, but I, I just like living out in New England now and you start to notice like the migration times and you, you start to notice the time like the months of the year where you see certain colors show up in different birds and I just think that there's so much to be said about just like where what birds you choose in the paintings and for me like I do a ton of homework on what <laughs> what could go where and what they signify you know how does a hummingbird change the conversation if it was like a blue jay um and I, I always love that there's this endless idea behind like what birds can really signify. Every culture has got a lot behind those. There's a long history of art and, uh, you know, also kind of manifesting it. And I, I think that they just, they add a certain element of life that, that I, I think some other objects really can't get at. So I've always been really true to the birds for sure. And I try really hard not to repeat the bird, the same type of bird in every painting. So I'm trying really hard to do that too. It's not always easy though. Oh yeah, they're all they're all very different. I yeah. mean, that is true. Birds have such a history. They're, a bird is an entire mood in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, yeah, for sure. And they come with their or, own like uh, um, even literary history. Talking about absolutely, birds. absolutely. Um, yeah. 
That's really cool to hear. That is one of those things that I really enjoy about your work as well. There is such a nod to art history. There is such a nod to these pieces that come from the past, Demeter, um, and then clearly the birds as well. At the same time, it is very relevant. It is very new, which is yeah. certainly not something that is easy to get as painters when we understand the history of like forever and ever. Yeah. Painting. Oh my gosh. No, there's a, there's a lineage for sure that, uh, that um, of a lot of different painters that have been very true to the birds, you know, especially some of the, some of the old masters that we, we start to see like, you know, um, yeah, like I, I think of like the birth of Venus, you know, where she's coming out of the ocean and there's these birds around her and it's like this very happy moment. And I, you know, I love the, the idea of using birds as just props and also just thinking about like, what, what are you trying to say with, with the natural world? You know, what is your relationship with the natural world and, and, um, and how do they help tell your story? So yeah, birds have always been an, an enigmatic and interesting part of my practice. Definitely. It's really cool yeah. to hear more about. So what about lemon trees? Oh, lemon trees. So I actually have a lemon tree that I've kept alive for seven years. I don't know how it's lived in new England, my house. And there's definitely moments in the winter where I think it's gone because it, it's dormant and it loses all its leaves and it doesn't look very good. But um, the lemon tree has always been a little fighter. It's always been my little fighter. It's um, also just my sister lives in Florida. This is the other thing is like, and her, she actually has lemon trees in her yard of, from her house. And I think that there's just a, such a difference in like how I picture the people with those kind of things, like in their actual life, <laughs> like, you know, like it's a whole different climate down there. and. I'm not used to that climate, but for me, the lemon tree, I mean, I would say like, there isn't a whole big uncovering of what I needed from it, other than the fact that I have a history with it in a lot of different contexts. And at the same time, it's a very reliable model. So yeah, it does the job. Um, and also just, I love, I just, I just love painting it. It's just so beautiful. It is beautiful. It's like a nice pop of yellow that yeah really and I have a little orange tree too I would say that, that my little citrus trees are I do not know trees. how you are keeping those we had one in our backyard <laughs> and you remember last year when Texas froze oh yeah it totally killed that poor lemon tree that's what's sad it is <laughs> I don't know how you're keeping yours alive like <laughs> I don't know. Oh my gosh. My poor lemon tree has seen some stuff. We, when we got kittens, like I thought the kittens were going to kill it. Like it has, it has all sorts of bite marks on the trunk that it's just like lived with. And, you know, I mean, the thing just, I don't know. It makes well, it deserves a place. Too. It deserves a place in your pain. It is a fight. Yeah. I just love it. <laughs> I, I think I'm just about it. It's just like a little honorary member of the family that just, it just does what I need it to do. And they make that. these very cute little lemons. They're they're not normal sized. They're babies. They're like little key limes, but they're lemons. <laughs> I don't know if that's normal, but I love it's it. It's wonderful, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> the cutest thing. Mm, oh. I love that. Well, I think, yeah. oh, I did have one more question for you. Sure. In the um, artist statements, there is one line in particular that I really loved. I have considered the notion that the symbiosis of both grief and repetition and handiwork are achieving a paradoxical effect in a hopeful funerary custom. Can you speak a little more to that? I, I personally thought it was really beautiful. When I was discussing your show with our new assistant director, Danae Keitzer, she actually brought up that exact line as really? well. And I was like, well, now I'm clearly going to have to ask about it because I'm not the only one. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I, it's funny too, because whenever I think back about how some of this work was made and like the history and the lineage of like handiwork, I mean, I've always been, I've granted, I was like a teenager when I started to pick up like the sewing machine, but for me, it was definitely like a mixed review of, of all the emotions of dealing with a lot of loss and dealing with COVID and 
you know, dealing with the fact that you're just making big grown up decisions and you're working in this sort of structural, like very almost, I hate to say feminine history, but like, I would say by and large, like when you think of quilting, it, it really did fall on women. And um, as I was starting to put things together by hand, like it was hard to not divorce the idea that it had this customary, like almost like a funeral procession. Like it was very much like bringing myself into this like element of grief as I was doing something that was very repetitive and almost like mind numbing and, and sort of trying to figure out kind of where I was on that spectrum, you know, like, was I grieving? Was I hopeful? I mean, there were definitely days where I thought like this coronavirus is just never going to end. And there were days where I was thinking like, man, if I could get to the studio for more than two hours a day, that'd be really great, you know, or my immune system was given out and like, cause I was not getting enough sleep. And then I was starting to think like, maybe I just need to slow it down, you know? And like, you just have these moments of like, you're, you're sort of triple checking your, your history and your own, your own like presence that you're, um, for me, it was like very hard to sort of get rid of the notion that there was something bigger happening. Um, so that was, that was kind of where that line came from. I really love hearing that. Thank you. Oh. Well, that is all the questions that I have. Does anybody else have any questions? Or comments. Or comments. Um, well, I can't believe I never got this answer during Crit Group or asked <laughs> this during Crit Group. But I, because I, you know, I own two of those little quilt paintings too. And I look at them sometimes where I'm like, even just the little bits of, that come from like a bigger painting and I know what your bigger paintings look like it makes me think like how does she know what to block out mm. like when you're painting do you think are you thinking through the steps of like I'm gonna put this layer down like a tr in traditional oil painting sense I'm gonna because there's so much that's blocked out and like it, it seems so mathematical in some way to me like how does how does how do you do it is what I want to know. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're telling me. Sometimes I will say that there isn't a math to it. Sometimes it's just from like my gut. Like, how do I, how do I end up doing something? Um, I, I don't know if I actually have a really good answer for you, Dara. I, I really don't. I, I think that a lot of times when you, for me, like there's certain paintings that I just have an idea on and I get to do and I get to work and rework like even the so the three paintings of my like six part series that wound up in the show those are the ones that were done pretty quickly mm -hmm. and there's three extra that are tacked onto the side that aren't in the show which are still being hammered out in my brain I still can't figure out certain colors can't decide if there should be more blue you know this is the stuff that I, like I sit up at night I don't know if you ever watched um, the Queen's Gambit on Netflix, mm -hmm. where she sits and she starts to think of her like chess pieces up yeah. on the screen. Like that's kind of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I would say to a point that's super relatable because I do sit there and I think like, okay, well, if there's more teal, like what if I had more thaler? Like, yeah, if I said this stuff out loud, my husband would be like, okay, like <laughs> <laughs> just because it is, it is kind of in the nitty gritty section of like the art making, but. But then don't you find when you're, when you're, when you're doing that, you're like, oh, well, maybe I'll make this a little more teal. And then you're like, oh, well, now I got to make my yellow a little more orange. Like, yeah, does it ever end? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, okay. I was literally, I had a colleague here like an hour ago, finishing up some stuff. And I, um, I'm in my office right now. And basically, um, he, he came in and he was looking at some of my art and, uh, I, he was like, oh, are you going to, what are you going to do with this like extra piece that was like, it was like right now it's neon yellow. That's the only thing. And I was like, I think I just made peace with the fact that I'm literally unable to mix gray. Like I literally can't <laughs> not have something colorful. Like it's sort of like what you were saying. Like every time there's some like moment of like, ah, uh, I get to give somebody's eyes a break. And I'm like, no, it needs more pink or something. <laughs> like that's, that's I don't part think of our it. eyes need a break. I think no, you should you're do color, you're do. like a color maximalist. I love it. Oh, that. for sure. Yeah. I think if there was a term, I want that term. Yeah attached for maybe. sure is that a word I don't know maybe I just made that word up. maximalism I definitely, definitely I color maximalist I'm into it 
Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the really special things that you bring with your artwork, how you do quilts and you approach your paintings in a very similar kind of manner intuitively. I don't know, know. but it works for you. So you keep doing that (laughs) because it's awesome. (laughs) Thank you. Y'all are so sweet. I'm so grateful that you're both here. And I just, yeah, I could not adore this community more. And Katie, I'm psyched for the, for the work that, you know, that you made and with this gallery, I think this is just such a, a beautiful space. And well, I'm thank you. so excited. I've been looking forward to the show being a part of it and it's going to be a really special part of it forever now, because this is going to be on YouTube. Um, if you are speaking of which, if you are watching this before is it February 15th, make sure I've got that right. 2022. You can still go and see the show on roaringartistgallery.com. And then um, February 16th, I knew I had that wrong. February 16th, 2022, then you can still go and wa- you can still go and explore the show yourself in our virtual gallery. If not, a few days afterwards, there should be a little um, walkthrough up on our YouTube as well. So this is now forever a part of Roaring Artist Gallery, and I could not be happier than it is. I really love this show. I love what you're doing. And I'm so thankful that you came and gave us some more information. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you all so much. This is like the best group ever. Well, do you have anything else that you want to share with us before we wrap up for tonight? Oh, all right. I'm all good. Thank you so much. Thank Mm. you, Dara, for being here. Thank you to everyone who has come to support Lauren. Thank you to everyone who's going to be watching this later on YouTube as well for supporting Lauren and for supporting our gallery. Um, We're excited about the things we're doing and we're really excited to have you here as a part of it. So um, you all have a wonderful evening and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.